everybody, it's Andrew again, your average jeweler, and today we're talking a very common question. What's the difference between diamonds and cubic zirconia? Is there a difference? Can I see it? And is it worth it? I hear this question so often, and for most jewelers, it's a little bit of a no-brainer. Maybe we get tired of answering it. I'm not sure. And maybe people don't want to hear the answer a lot of times. But I'm going to go over several different differences and do a comparison of diamonds and cubic zirconia and talk to you about how it relates to the average person and whether the extra money that you're de generally going to spend on a diamond is worth it or if there are times when you can make that compromise of cubic zirconia. Let's talk. Before I talk too much about this, I do want to set a little bit of a guideline for what I use as criteria when I think of these two things. And generally, we have to compensate for the cost difference of these two stones because even in a lower quality diamond, cubic zirconia, or CZ as it's often referred, is going to be a much less expensive option, exponentially less expensive. It's a very inexpensive, inexpensive stone and it can be manufactured at a pretty good rate and if we take cost out of it, I really don't think there's much of a conversation here. I think diamond is a strong winner in almost every single category regardless of what some marketing says. Diamond is a clear winner overall. But given the huge chasm within the prices, it's important to have this conversation and understand why the two still exist. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe below. Please hit the like button if you're getting any value out of these videos and keep coming back. I want to keep teaching. I want to keep going over some different topics. And these are questions that I get. Sometimes people think they know the answer. Many times once they get the real answer, they understand there were some misconceptions, a lot of assumptions made. So I want to get into the nitty gritty of those things. I'm almost going to go about this as if I'm using the diamond grading criteria. And I think that's important because that's how diamonds are typically valued. And again, they're the much more expensive stone. And much of the premise of this is based on cost. So we're going to talk about those four C's a little bit and try and make a good comparison, contrast the two stones. Let's start with cut. If I talk about cut, Diamonds today, a round brilliant diamond, which most people are used to seeing, is literally cut with the intention of maximizing diamond properties to get this full brilliance and all the light going on and the sparkliness that people love about it. And that's something that's evolved over time to the point where technology today allows for a very good cut most of the time. Now diamond cutters will make certain compromises if they're trying to save weight or maybe remove an obvious inclusion something like that. They'll use their judgment and their experience to try and cut a stone to what they feel maximizes that particular stone. With that said, cubic zirconia is often cut to mimic this. However, because it's such an inexpensive stone, they very rarely take the same care as they would with diamond. So usually a CZ cut is going to be very inferior and not finished very well. Now, does that make a huge difference? Yes and no. Given what the stone is, it's still going to give you some of those, some of those sparkly characteristics, and it is going to look like it has something going on. Again, it's generally described as kind of a fiery stone. You'll even see a little bit of color in most cubic zirconia. But when they compromise on the cut, you are losing what diamond cutters try so hard to perfect. Diamond cutting is graded on such a fine scale that little differences in angles, even just a few degrees in the tilt of, of some of the angles in a diamond, can knock the cutting grade down at least one, if not sometimes two or more grades, depending on those small differences. So it's important to know that the diamond industry acknowledges that people notice these differences in cut. You can actually see when a diamond is cut better than another. And when we look at cubic zirconia, almost every CZ would be cut to a very poor grade. And I think that's worth noting because when you look at diamonds, you value that cut grade and you actually pay more when they're cut better. 
If every cubic zirconia is cut to a poor grade, or sometimes not really even that, is it worth it? I know we're being nitpicky here. I think you should know some of these small details. So next, I want to talk about the color. The color in cubic zirconia is pretty uniform. You're not going to find a lot of variation, whereas with diamonds, you can start to notice a little bit of yellow or sometimes brown, and it's not necessarily glaring, but there becomes a point when the average person can notice it. Cubic zirconia, on the other hand, is much more controlled and they can generally keep the color consistently white. Now, when I talk about a colorless diamond, you may hear people use the word white diamond. It is somewhat of a misnomer. There are actually diamonds that are white. When we say a white diamond, we usually mean colorless. It doesn't have any of that distracting yellow or brown in it. CZ, on the other hand, can actually look more white. And sometimes it will be described with a little bit of a hazy look. I'll say right out of the gate, most jewelers that have looked at any number of diamonds can identify as CZ quickly. It doesn't take long, particularly when you look close, but even when you're looking at it from a distance, to recognize some of those differences between CZ and diamond. So to quickly answer that question, yes, a good jeweler should very quickly know whether it's not diamond or it is cubic zirconia. I'm going to brush over the carrot just a little bit because that's essentially the size and this one does make a difference if you're looking for a very large stone because again, that exponential difference in the cost is gonna be that much more because a, a big giant piece of cubic zirconia, quite frankly, isn't gonna cost that much. Whereas a large diamond, the cost is massive. So it is important to understand that component, but otherwise the carrot part or the weight aspect, it doesn't need a whole lot of explanation. But if you want a really large stone, well, CZ is not going to go up that much in price, whereas diamonds, you're going to see a drastic change. Now the clarity department, that's another one where cubic zirconia is usually pretty consistent. Cubic zirconia is usually pretty clean. Again, the controlled environment, the way they make it, it's usually a pretty clean stone, almost glassy looking, and diamonds will have a propensity to have inclusions in them. Most of the diamonds that make it into jewelry stores are not going to be terribly dirty in a reputable jewelry store, but sometimes, to be cost effective, diamonds will have noticeable inclusions. They can look like black things or little cracks or little wispy waves, and it can take away and diminish some of the beauty. It does add character and it makes that diamond what it is, but cubic zirconia is, is gonna be clean across the board. So when you talk about clarity, it seems like cubic zirconia, again, has a really strong win there. So why are diamonds the better choice? Well, when it comes down to it, if you look at two new in a case, you're looking at a cubic zirconia and you're looking at a diamond brand new, anyone who doesn't have a lot of experience might have some challenges trying to tell the two apart. And so in your mind, you think, well, if I can't really tell the two apart, why would I pay so much more for this one? It seems like it's just a marketing thing, or it's just a scam, or the rarity of it isn't worth it to me. I don't care about those things. That's all fine, and those are things that you should be talking about, but when it comes to long-term, diamonds are by far your better option. I have seen countless rings especially come in with cubic zirconia beat to shreds. It looks terrible, and because the stone is inexpensive, usually the manufacturing of the ring or the piece of jewelry as a whole is done very cheaply. Cubic zirconia jewelry, as a rule, is not made to the same quality standards as many nicer pieces of jewelry. That means that stones set into prongs have a propensity to bend or break out of shape. It means that sometimes there are components that are just not finished well and they can be sharp or, or rugged. And it's, it's the jewelry piece as a whole that should be considered. Now what if you were to put a cubic zirconia in a nice piece of jewelry? Well, you still have the reality that the stone itself is gonna get much more beat up and scratched than a diamond. It's incredibly hard to beat up a diamond. You can do it, but it is not easy. And diamonds will last generationally. Cubic zirconia in a ring might get a couple years before it looks pretty trashed. It doesn't bother everyone. I've heard instances where people have their rings with cubic zirconia 
and they absolutely love it and they wouldn't do a thing to change it. With that said, they also can't deny that they notice that the stone has changed. And it's not the same sparkly stone they once had, it's just the stone they were given. So it's much more about sentiment and for some people that really doesn't matter. To me, it feels a little bit like you're walking out of the house in ratty clothes all the time. And I don't mean that just to be offensive, I mean that it is something that looks obviously like it wasn't meant to look. So keep that in mind, at least if you're trying to make some of these decisions. Ultimately, diamonds will hold some value. It's not like you can just turn around and sell a diamond because the store you bought it from has probably been trying to sell diamonds and they have to stock many of them to do it and they have to wait for customers to come in they have a reputation, they have all these things going for them. So don't think that you can just buy any random diamond and flip it. However, that diamond is going to maintain some value because people will always want a natural diamond. And the nicer diamond that you, can, you get, the more that's true. The larger the stone, the more clean it is, the more that someone is always gonna want that diamond. And that is true for the next generations. If that stone gets passed down, you're far more likely to have someone in future generations truly appreciate it if it's a nicer stone. So you pay more for them, but you do get something that is going to last you a long, long time. I don't exaggerate when I say generations. Now is that extra cost worth it for you? That's for you to decide. But can I answer the question that there is a definitive difference? Absolutely. I think if it's an important piece of jewelry, like an engagement ring, the diamond is still the appropriate option. Not because it's just diamond, but because it represents what you're trying to represent. It represents something that's lasting and beautiful and rare, and I think it's appropriate for a nice special piece, an anniversary piece or an engagement ring. But if you just want a little memento, if you just want a keepsake that wouldn't bother you if it got beat up, you know, it's, it's not meant to be a special piece of jewelry that you want to keep and maintain and maybe even pass on. Cubic zirconia is a far more cost-effective option. Just keep in mind there are compromises and it's not the same. Jewelry, when it looks the same initially, it's not all the same. That's one of the things I'm trying to teach you. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know what it was below. I am always interested what kind of things you might have heard in the past. If what I said disagrees with something, um, hopefully you can even do your own research and I hope I'm right, but you're welcome to challenge me in the comments below. And I, again, hope you learned something and keep, back, keep coming back so we can keep learning.